Hi, my name is Juraj Martinka and I'm the author of Curious Closure Programmer blog hosted at CuriousProgrammer.net. In this video, I will show you how to use Spacemax and Cider for closure development. Let's get started. We will create a new Liningen project called Closure Repl. Uh, this project will contain some basic utilities for playing with uh, Java classes and basically listing the public methods of uh, Java class, which is the functionality which is not directly available in Clojure or Cider. So let's switch to our project, list the files, remove the unnecessary ones, init git repository to track our changes and we can commit the project skeleton. Now we are ready to open our project in Spacemax. Uh, Spacemax has a concept called layout. Uh, layout is uh, basically a logical group of related buffers uh, with uh, which you want to work separately to avoid mixing with all the other buffers. Uh, I basically use a separate layout for each project that I'm working on. Uh, you can show all current layouts by pressing space L. As you can see, there's only one layout called default. This layout will always contain all buffers from all the other buffer from all the other layouts that you have. So let's create a new layout by pressing number two, uh, which is basically the number of layout which doesn't exist yet, uh, responding with yes and giving it the name closure REPL. Now I can press space L again. And as you can see, there's a new layout called closure REPL. Uh, now I can open any file I want by pressing space FF and navigating to my new project, opening the project.clj and fixing the description. I already pushed the repository to GitHub, so I just copy the description and also fix the URL. Now I will save it by pressing Ctrl X, Ctrl S. Uh, what I wanted to do next is to examine the project structure to get familiar with it. Uh, you can do this by pressing space P, T, which will open Neo3 buffer window. Uh, you can navigate through this window uh, using the standard uh, Vim shortcuts J and key, J for down, K for up, also the pressing L to expand directory or even open the file. Uh, you can always press a uh, question mark to show the help. But now I'm about to fix the readme, just giving the same description and fixing the copyright. And I can save it by pressing Ctrl X S or colon V and I can kill it by pressing Ctrl X and K because I don't need it anymore. Uh, be careful to uh, not uh, close it, save and close it by um, typing colon X because this will close the whole Emacs application, which is probably something you don't want to do. Okay, so let's move back to the Neo3 buffer by pressing space zero, which is the number of Neo3 buffer window and clean up, up the change log. Just add the node that we want to improve this later and 
save it and kill it. Okay. Now we can also open the generated namesake core.clj, just remove the function, save it and kill it, and also the test, remove the test, and save and kill. Okay, now we are ready to create our new namespace uh, that will uh, contain our uh, code. Uh, so let's move back to the Netri buffer the source closure REPL directory and press C as create to create new closure space called java.clj press yes and uh, as we can see the spacemax will automatically created uh, the new closure space based on the template now, as we don't need the neo tree buffer window anymore, we can press space PT again to hide it. Uh, I will save the generated file and now I wanna to evaluate this file to be able to develop my code interactively or step by step with a rapid turnaround. So I can press comma e b for evaluating the whole buffer but the thing is that uh, it needs an active nrepl connection so i have to start the cider nrepl first uh, this action is called cider check in uh, which as you can see is bound to the keyboard shortcut comma apostrophe so now run it. Uh, it will take a while, but uh, after that we have a long running uh, REPL, which we can reuse for evaluation and we don't need to start it over and over again. So we uh, pay the price of the initial startup time only once at the beginning and uh, then we can basically reuse it. it we can even add uh, new dependencies or hot load new dependencies uh, to project to our project automatically without uh, need to restart whole REPL. So we are connected. We can press Ctrl C, Ctrl Z to open the REPL buffer. We can play it with by doing some simple calculation to check that it works and by pressing ctrl c ctrl z we can move back to our source code buffer so now if i press comma eb i can evaluate the whole buffer and uh, get the result and it's nail okay that uh, looks good now let's move on to uh, implementation of our function so let's call it j methods give it one argument called class and also some documentation which returns a sequence of all public java methods array on given class including the methods inherited from parents great that's basically it that's the functionality we want to implement now just uh, reevaluate the buffer and uh, try to call our function on some java classes like java util date and we got a compilation error unable to resolve symbol because we are in a different namespace so we can move back to our source code buffer and press ctrl c meta n to switch the current REPL namespace to to the namespace of the buffer which we are in so let's press ctrl c ctrl z again uh, press meta p to go back in the history and evaluate it and now everything is okay so let's press ctrl c ctrl z again uh, 
to avoid frequent switching between REPL buffer and the source code buffer, I prefer to type all temporary code into the buffer itself at the bottom and then just remove it. So I will continue to do this like in the following fashion and then I can just press comma EF to evaluate current S expression uh, and the result will show in the temporary uh, pop-up. If I want to show the results in REPL buffer, I can move just behind the expression and press comma CE and I will see the results in REPL buffer. So we are good to go and can uh, continue with implementation. So how can we possibly implement the JMethods function? Um, there's one cool function uh, from Closure Core called bean which can return the java properties and if we give it a class uh, we can get uh, lots of useful stuff from it so let's evaluate this in buffer pressing comma se and as you can see there is there are many information there there are also some methods which we can leverage but uh, let's look at the documentation of bean to see what's the expected structure of the return uh, object is so press comma hh to show the documentation pop-up and as you can see takes the java object returns a read-only implementation of the map abstraction based upon its java bean properties okay so there's not much in this doc uh, we can hide it by pressing q but uh, basically what it returns is uh, a map so we can show the keys of this map uh, notice that now uh, i can press space k s to wrap the next expression this is called slurp and press escape to finish it now if i evaluate this i can see there are lots of keys so search for methods there are declared methods and there are methods okay declared methods are uh, all the methods including private ones declared in that particular class in our case java util date and methods are actually all public methods including those inherited from parents so uh, this is exactly the thing we wanna get so let's use methods and the output is uh, almost good but it's also quite difficult to read so we need to improve this to be able to quickly see list of all methods that are available uh, let's move this to implementation of our function replacing joy to lady class and just reevaluate yeah the results are the same uh, now i can uh, quickly reformat the whole buffer by pressing comma equals to make sure that uh, i have consistent style uh, okay uh, instead of this bloated output it would be much better if we just show the list of names and possibly parameters and uh, return types so let's start with names we, okay these are the things which we wanna to implement parameter types also return types and maybe something else Okay, let's start with um, 
names of the methods. So, uh, can probably start with what we have. Notice that I quickly navigating between opening and closing brace by pressing uh, percent sign, which uh, quickly get me to the matching brace and I can just insert anything behind it. So I can add a map, which will take a name from method and that's it. Now if I evaluate my new function, I will get a unsorted list of all methods. This is uh, quite good, but still a little bit uh, disorganized. So I wanted to sort these methods by name. So this will be the same method, get a name and reevaluate by pressing comma EF and again send the, to the REPL and now we can see the all the methods are sorted alphabetically which is pretty good so we can quickly check which methods are available for Java till date and just to check it we can for example call get year on Java util date instance. Okay, small mistake. We need to create an instance and we will get 107. Uh, okay, so we finish the first, first thing. Let's move on the parameter types. Uh, how can we get the type of parameters? Uh, the methods returned by bean function uh, are actually of type java lang reflect method and we can already use our cool new function j methods to show all public methods in this class so let's do this there are lots of them and we can try to search for something containing the parameter and there are get parameters, maybe parameter only. Get type parameters, get parameters come, parameter types, get parameters. Okay, get parameter types and get parameters are good candidates for this. So let's try the first one. Just uh, parameter types just try it on the first random method return by bean okay this looks reasonable there's one parameter of type java lang object so let's use this uh, since we need a richer des text description of our method than just name uh, we should separate this into the new function called method description. We want to include name of the method and the pa parameters uh, separated by space. So let's use the function from closure string name space, which will join multiple items and give it a space as a separator and collection of things that we want to display the first is the name of course we need to declare our arguments so first we need to get a name and then get parameter types of method by the way you can invoke the text auto completion by pressing alt slash and this will include the even the things that a uh, cider doesn't know about just some ordinary text uh, okay so let's try to evaluate this and 
we'll get a compilation error unable to resolve symbol join because we didn't require it, a closure string namespace yet. We can do this quickly by pre uh, pressing comma R A and M. This is shortcut for CLJR added the missing lip spec. CLJR is uh, stands for closure refactor. It's a uh, an repl refactor middleware which provides uh, quite handy functions for quickly refactoring our code and this is one of them so if I choose the proper namespace I will get automatic uh, require namespace declaration and now when I evaluate the function method description by pressing comma ef uh, I get the proper result okay so just try it Okay, send the result to the REPL and that's still nothing new because we didn't use this new function so just use it method description reevaluate and send the result to the REPL and what we got is the name of the method followed by some uh, cryptic string this is basically default two-string implementation of Java array which unfortunately isn't a hum very human friendly so we wanna to fix this there is a Java util arrays class containing two-string method for this and we can just use it so send the result again and now it's much better we actually see uh, the list of all parameters so this is pretty good we can move on to the next step and which is the return type uh, when we look at the methods of a uh, java lang reflect method class uh, we can see there is also the get return type method so let's use this get return type method reevaluate function and send the result to the REPL and now you can see that the return time is the last item in method text description uh, Unfortunately, the return time isn't uh, very visible or isn't clear what, uh, which part actually denotes the return time. So we can fix this by introducing a small visual helper. Just put the arrow and reval again and now it's better okay so we already have a return type and we may be done but uh, let's uh, play with uh, the results a little bit and see if there's anything else we may want to implement so so let's dig deeper and uh, take a look at the uh, Java util data UTC function which has a funny name so we can navigate to this Java class source code by pressing comma gg uh, this will include the cider find var uh, action and uh, it should work out of the box uh, if you have uh, JDK sources installed on your system so let's search for UTC and yay it looks like that this method is deprecated uh, we certainly don't want to uh, show the deprecated methods by default uh, so we need to filter them out by pressing ctrl o multiple times I get 
back to the to my original buffer and uh, let's see how we can improve our output to filter out the deprecated methods so we probably want to introduce new helper function to determine if method is deprecated but uh, how can we do that so let's list the methods of java lang reflect method again and search for something like annotation annotations by type declared annotation all this can be useful but let's move on yeah is annotation present looks like exactly the thing we want to use so move back to our buffer and try to use it uh, it access one argument which is a class of the annotation in this case java lang deprecated real deprecated function and now filter out all deprecated methods we can do this early in the process by using complement of deprecated predicate and now if i evaluate the j methods again i can see that there are uh, way less methods that there were before and the utc method for example isn't there anymore so uh, i can see for example the after method yeah and it's not deprecated so the our code works ex expected mm. the final thing we may want to add is to add the possibility to show also the deprecated methods but uh, not by default so we can create a, a two rt variant of our function which will display the deprecated methods if a user asks for them so let's name the new parameter include deprecated move the implementation let's reformat the buffer by pressing comma equals and now we need to change this predicate um, so delete it and basically what we want to do is uh, either consider either include deprecated or the method itself is not deprecated and wrap this into anonymous function okay so now send the results back to REPL it's the same now use the or try to show also the deprecated methods and here we are okay everything works as expected so we are done we can remove our temporary code save our file and now we can commit uh, the new namespace uh, we could do this in a shell but uh, instead i want to show you the magit uh, plugin which is bundled uh, with space max by default so press space gs and uh, 
It will show you magic buffer with all unstacked changes. You can examine the changes by pressing tab and pressing it again to hide them. So let's now add all unstaged changes. Press C twice to commit cleanup project structure. Uh, save and close the window. Now you can press uh, column X safely and continue with new namespace Java CLJ. Uh, so again, press S. C twice and add the Java J with J methods returning list of all public methods for Java class. Okay. Now press Q to close magic buffer and uh, we may want to add some tests. We, as we were implementing uh, our stuff, we uh, didn't write any test, but uh, we can uh, fix it now and create uh, Java test CLJ by pressing C in Neo3 buffer window. Press yes, close Neo3 buffer and the test skeleton is generated for us. Just use refer all to have all symbols available without prefix. And now we can define the tests at least the basic one, checking the default case of non-deprecated Java methods. Now let's just check that the expected sequence is returned. Uh, there's an empty vector, but uh, so uh, this should fail. Now I can run this test directly from CIDR by pressing comma TA which will run all the tests in the test namespace and as you can see the actual result is uh, quite different we believe that this actual result is uh, correct so just copy it and quote the list now I can run the tests again and now they are green okay i'm pretty happy so i can save this file and press space gs to invo invoke magit again to press s to stage the changes and c twice to commit them add the test for j methods should be enough close Q closed magic buffer. And that's basically it. SpaceMac and Cider have many more cool features, and I'd like to show you a couple of them that could improve your everyday closure development. Uh, let's start by uh, pressing space question mark, and this is the killer feature of uh, SpaceMax. You can basically use it to examine the shortcuts for various commands and to just learn about uh, different available commands. So let's type space ks and we will see this, this is bound to the ill lisp state. Uh, we can also try to, for example, cider jack and as we can see, there are um, many different uh, shortcuts uh, assigned to CiderJack in or CiderJack in Closure Script. Uh, uh, to learn about Cider features, we can also use MetaX and type Cider dash. 
and then just uh, scroll down using Ctrl N and, or Ctrl V and see all possible commands and the assigned shortcuts. Uh, you can also find useful the cider menu which you can uh, invoke via F10 or just using the mouse. Uh, there are uh, logical groups of commands and you can try to uh, go through them and uh, learn some new useful stuff. Uh, this is uh, pretty cool for uh, learning CIDR. Okay, let's say that uh, we uh, want to play with uh, some new third-party library. So to do this, we will uh, create a new namespace, a uh, new buffer called uh, bonus.clj. Uh, and uh, we want to add uh, Instaparse library to our project. Instaparse is a library for uh, creating uh, simple parsers. Uh, so normally we would need to add a uh, Instaparse dependency vector to project.clj somewhere here, but uh, this would require us to restart the whole REPL environment which uh, we would like to avoid. So there's uh, another option which is called uh, cljr, the, the project dependency. You can invoke uh, this command by pressing comma r a and P. Oh, sorry, that's that was a uh, wrong dependency. So again, type instaparse, press enter, select the version, and now we have the uh, instaparse dependency in our project.clj. And what's even better that uh, this dependency uh, uh, has been hot loaded into our REPL environment, so we can switch to bonus.clj and add a uh, require to our namespace declaration. Uh, we can do this uh, uh, by another command called cljr added the require to ns. Uh, the shortcut is comma rar. Now enter the uh, insert mode and type instaparse core press tab and enter the proper alias and we are ready to go uh, we will just uh, copy the example from instaparse documentation you can try to evaluate and everything works as, as expected. Uh, now try it to invoke and as you can see we got the proper result. Um, Cider has a handy feature called Cider Inspect Last Result. So press meta x and type sander cider inspect last result and it will show you the buffer with uh, the result and you can go uh, the you can deep dive pressing the enter and continue and even go into the string class if you want and you can also navigate back but there's one gotcha when using space max evil mode because you need to switch to Emacs mode here. So press Ctrl Z to do that and press L to go up and press Ctrl Z again and L, Ctrl Z and L. And you can type uh, Q to quit the buffer. Uh, okay, uh, there were, were a couple of useful features. Uh, if you want to search for the symbol inside your namespace you can just uh, do the regular search like this or you can uh, 
move cursor uh, to the symbol and press star and uh, Cider wheel or space mag will auto automatically highlight uh, all occurrences of given symbol that's pretty handy in some cases uh, you can also search through the all files in a given project by pressing space slash and just type something like R as you can see these are all the occurrences of string par in uh, our project. So this is pretty handy for quick search. Uh, if you want, you can uh, try another approach by pressing space F G and then search for uh, par and select the directory and here you are the buffer with the results okay mm. one last thing that i'd like to show you is uh, the navigation to uh, closure lang java sources uh, let's say that uh, we want to look at the code of closure lang persistent vector uh, and we can do this uh, just as we did it with uh, java till date by pressing comma gg and now we are in uh, java source code for closure lang persistent vector there is lots of stuff here but uh, you can also you can just uh, uh, check the code and maybe learn something about the closure internals. Uh, one thing that you need to do in order uh, to work it properly is to add uh, closure sources to the class path. You can either uh, do it in project.clg file or you can add it to your profiles.clg file as I did it so you can see that uh, I added closure sources to REPL uh, profile dependencies uh, make sure to not add these sources to the user profile uh, because uh, it can uh, be in conflict with uh, some tools like uh, lining and cljs build uh, going back to going back to our bonus.clj file uh, we could also try to get the documentation but uh, unfortunately this uh, doesn't work properly we only get uh, some uh, basic overview of class uh, if we try to uh, get documentation for st standard java class uh, by typing comma hj uh, the cider will open online java dog and we can examine it at and see the meta description and everything else that's all i wanted to cover uh, make sure to check my blog for a summary of this uh, screencast and thank you for watching